In Ethiopia, there are two ways to get a job, the hard way or the easy way. Some youth at a mere age of nine choose the hard way, but not very lucrative way. They become corrales, trash pickers. They pick up recyclables and sell them for enough money to buy some food. This is my story and sadly the realities of many young Ethiopians. Waste mismanagement is huge in Ethiopia. It is one of the many countries without formal waste management. In a rural city of Osana, 83% of household waste is left uncollected. That is over 25 million pounds of waste ending up in public spaces every year, costing the lives of 153,000 people every year. Where others see problems, we see a solution. Inspired by Bini's story, our project tackles the job crisis in Ethiopia while improving public and environmental health through proper waste management. This is how Corale Co-op was born. Corale Co-op is a grassroots project with people and community as its priority. Our mission is to employ Ethiopians by formalizing waste collecting, public cleaning, and recycling industries in Ethiopia. Our business is founded upon employment and waste management. We will offer employment to unskilled and skilled workers to collect, sort, and make profit from marketable waste. We provide employment that is dignified and reliable. We will implement an integrated waste management system that is sustainable and improves the health and economies of Ethiopian communities. Corale Co-op is entering an untapped market with no formal competition. Due to established partnerships with the government, there will likely not be a competitive response from the formal or informal sector. But how do we turn in trash into cash? It all starts with the households in our target cities. We will provide incentives such as free trash sorting bins, school and household supplies to encourage the households to join our free sorting program. These incentives are increasingly expensive in Ethiopia. Our employees will pick up trash according to two main categories, paper and solid waste and recyclables. On those same days, a team of workers will gather more trash by cleaning public spaces in the community. The recyclables are further sorted into categories of plastic, metals, rubber, and glass at the transfer facility. The paper and solid waste is sold to a local energy company where it is converted into electricity. The remaining materials are sold to local companies where they are repurposed and recycled. This system requires 125 employees covering five different jobs, including drivers, collectors, processors, cleaners, and managers to serve 6,000 households and process up to 3,300 tons of trash per year. It is scalable to all towns and cities in Ethiopia. In our first year, we will begin operation in our rural city of, a rural city called Osana, but we're beginning operation in that subsidy, Kofermera, reaching about 1,500 households. By year four, we estimate to reach an average of 6,000 households. Corale Co-op remains financially sustainable by pioneering the business of selling sorted waste. Our projected revenue was calculated based on the lowest published prices for selling sorted trash and recyclables. And we have further included a discount factor to take, to take into account the learning curves and unknowns. Even so, we anticipate a profit of approximately $3,000 in year one, and we estimate a profit of approximately $300,000 by year four. All of our profits will be used to cover expansion and operating costs. Corale Co-op wants to change the labor standards in Ethiopia by offering the following to its workers. A secure position, a reliable salary that is two times the average wage in Ethiopia, a country with no minimum wage, workshops and money management advice, professional development, where an unskilled worker has the opportunity to gain leadership and more responsibility as our company grows and a safe working environment that adheres to standard sanitary and safety conditions. An unemployed person, or even a corale, can now have a safe and dignified job that can transform their lives. Already, we have support. Along with our board of advisors, we have a signed agreement from the government of Osana in support of our system. So we ask you to imagine creating employment and reducing pollution as a solution. Thank you. How'd you get that contract? I have families back home, so I reached out to them and um, they went up to the government and told, us, told them their, uh, our idea and they were, they were okay. They were, uh, kind of, said yes. Yeah. Don't be sheepish about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part that people won't do. 
So I mean, you should be proud of that. That's not a that you don't back don't be don't downplay that. That's a huge thing. Who else has contracts in here? Besides you guys. So what are the what are the margins? What are the metrics? What are the we will pay somebody ten cents a pound and we think we'll get fifty cents a pound? What how what are you know, get down into the, to the granular or the nits about that. How's that work? Okay, so in the first year, our profit margin is 23%. It costs $179 to process uh, a ton of trash. So we get revenue from selling paper solid waste to Repi, a local energy company, and that is at $170 per ton. Paper, rubber, glass, and other recycled materials are sold to different companies. They all have a different price point. Plastic is sold at $140 per ton. Rubber glass is sold at $22 per ton. Metals is sold at $700 per ton. Based on volumes, metal, rubber, and glass are one of the lowest um, products that we will sell. Paper and solid waste constitutes 92%. Yes. We. <laughs> need to be on slide. That's really good that you know it. Okay. But it's, it's really we do have a backup slide for oh. this information the, for the mm -hmm. question section. The one before that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Will there be a black market if I start, you start putting people into doing that, they start paying attention to picking up metal, and instead of bringing it to you, they bring it to somewhere else? Will that, is that, is that a fear? I think um, the biggest thing that comes with putting this into a formal system of labor is that it comes with benefits, like there's employee benefits, there's reliable employment. So not only are we providing wages for um, our employees, but we're providing a livable um, source of income for the family that they can rely on and with other benefits. So even if they're able to make money inconsistently through collecting on their own, they don't have the benefits that the formal sector provides. We're thinking about the, the people, you know, in in the United States, you know, steal copper out of basements and steal from the air conditioning units and that kind of thing because they can go and do that. How do you how do you prevent that? I was going to answer for that. You're going to pay based on like commission, right? So you get all the households involved, and then it's up to them to collect the trash, and sort it, and if they don't for a week, they just don't get paid. That week. Mm -hmm. So we incentivize the household to start the trash department to the cafeteria to pick up the bins. So that it is a low cost to the household. We then have pick up trucks that go once a week for paper and solid days by the food for the recycling period. So that would be less important. And our employees are paid a standard for the number of hours they work a week. It doesn't matter how much they pick up or what they Okay, so your employees are the drivers and the yes. sort of collectors yes, and the ways that you do that. And additionally, we are planning at our facility to open up additional recycling for things like electronic waste that isn't like a um, large scale, but that they can bring it to us and we'll purchase it directly from them and be able to sell it from them. So at the household level, I'm just sorting the clip because you've motivated me to do so. And I don't get a benefit at the, at the household level besides trying to clean up my area. Is that correct? Well, the households get uh, household and school supplies apart from the Fresh, free, uh, certain things. Okay. So you're providing additional incentive. Because yes. we can't even get Hoosiers to recycle. Right. We have to right. pay. And a lot of people don't pay every recycle. So the household level is tough to get. So you're trading some kind of value yes. for doing yeah. that. Because in the capital city, the recycling companies, well, the pickup companies that are there, they charge the households for money and they still face a certain and one of the things we've seen is there's been some research about this, and there is interest in having a waste management system, and especially if we can get one that's free to the um, households and provides reliable um, collection and other incentives, I think there would be really significant buy -in. One last burning question, judges. How much energy will you put into the training programs of your employees, and if you thought about how that curriculum will be? The training for the job? Or the the, 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 the Financial, you said you were going to teach financial stability. Yes. So there will be paid to come to that training. That could be included in the number of hours they pay for me. But we will have someone come in and it could be something that happens monthly, something that happens by the week, but it will be more intense in the beginning of the 
on the project to start with. Um, but it will be going through the process of opening a bank account and you manage your money as soon as you can make a salary to how much the allocation is. Great, thank you. Thank you.